Some are winners, some are losers, and some were sold out. I'm talking about the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty for spring 2023. What did I actually end up buying and what did I return? And what was I late in getting and lost out? Well, I'm gonna tell you in this video and I'm gonna tell you what I think about the products. I'm gonna speed through them. Some of the products I already pre-recorded my opinions and my thoughts on them and kind of zoomed in. Also have some B-roll for you where I show um, applying the product to my face, especially for all of the makeup. I only have a few skincare products and also because I returned some things already as of the day I'm filming this, I actually returned some things yesterday. So let's get started. I'm 63 years old right now, so makeup acts differently on my skin than it did even in my 50s and certainly than it did in my 40s or 30s and certainly in my 20s. So when I hear YouTubers saying this makeup of this product worked really well for me, but they're a lot young, young enough to be my daughters. Uh, yeah, it, I can't take their word for it. So let's start with one of the things that was one of the first things I bought. And by the way, I'm reviewing everything alphabetically. <laughs> I just put it in Excel and alphabetized it. And all the products I'm talking about today will be in the description box below the video. Tap or click the word more to open that up. And all the products are down there in the order in which I'm reviewing them. So I'm starting with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. This is one of my favorite things. I use it all the time. So of course I bought two. I use it in the color taupe. This goes on so well. It's not overly creamy or overly dry, which is a problem with a lot of brow products out there. If they're too creamy, they go on too heavy and it's hard to correct it. If they go on too dry, it just takes too long to apply them, you know, with this dry pencil. This one, you don't have to sharpen. I have no idea how much product is in there. Someday I wanna buy a bunch of products and just take the product out, right? Just take it out. I know it would be a waste of money, but maybe people would be interested to see how much product is actually in things like this that we can't see. So this one I absolutely love. The other one I'm on the fence about is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude and the color Call My Blush. This is more of a, of a mauve color. I bought it in another color that I really like. And the reason I got these is because they are matte. I also already have some shimmer colors. And another line that they used to sell at Ulta called Studio Gear, I absolutely love their blushes and they're all matte. The thing is, this is too bright, I think. Now today I used a lighter hand than I normally use with any of my blushes, but when I put this on the first time, it was just too clown-like. So even though blush colors are really pretty when they're bright, they're pretty in the pan, they're just too bright on the face. And the colors that I like on the face, on my face the most, when they're in the pan, they look, I remember Natalie the Beauty Viva once said, the color of the blush in the pan looks dead. <laughs> It's just kind of a drab color, but when it's on the face, it looks really good and not clown-like. So I used a lighter hand today with this, and then I used my big fluffy brush, and I brushed it out just to blend it, and I think it looks okay today, but that's a lot of work. You know, I have another matte blush in kind of a pinky mauve in the MAC um, cosmetics and that one I don't look like a clown and I could just put it on really fast without thinking too hard about it and not wind up looking like I'm ready for the circus so yeah I'm on the fence about this one interesting that the other one that's more peachy looking that one I didn't get the clown look from it the bright the bright cheek color so yeah on the fence about that one and here I have the bare minerals this is pretty in pink this is one of their lightest colors it's actually more of a more of a peachy look. So I put on all my makeup except for blush. And I'm using a medium size Japanese blush. And I need a closer up mirror. See what I'm doing. 
Now, this one isn't as intense as that pink. So I like this one better than the other one, but it's not as much pink as the other one was. And then I'm going to buff it out with a big fluffy brush. All right, just looking at my monitor. I think it looks okay, so I think this one is a keeper. Dermalogica Smoothing Cream. I got it because it's half off. <laughs> and you can't really go wrong with Dermalogica because they make really good products. Now, this is what I would call a nighttime cream. It's not a sunscreen. You could wear it in the morning right before your sunscreen. Now, here's the thing about this. The regular price is $47 for 1.7 ounces. I did the math. That works out to just over $27 per ounce. Yeah. Now it's nice. Like what's in it? Well, I took a look at some of the ingredients. It does have a hyaluronic acid complex and several antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, arnica, and lactic acid. But I think a lot of other nighttime creams have a lot of the same properties so is there something really great about spending this kind of money i don't know about that i recently did a video where i talked about nighttime moisturizers and creams and i have some there that i recommend also going down to the per ounce price and i think that's what it comes down to when it comes down to your favorites how much are you paying for it and yeah, it's a, it's a lovely cream. I didn't do any B-roll on this. It's not runny. Yeah. Um, you can see that little bit on my hand here. And it's nice. But I don't know that it's $27 per ounce. Nice. A product I'm leaning toward returning is the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Pore Refining Primer. Now, the reason I bought this at half price was because the reviews were raving about it. Oh, no other primer has stopped my pores from showing through, and this is the only one that does it, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, well, okay, I'll try it. I'm not a big primer user person. And so <laughs> the first thing I noticed about it is that it is not clear or white or anything. It's tinted and there's no reason for it to be tinted. It's not thick enough to be a, even a BB cream and um, it's actually quite thin. So that didn't really bother me because once I smeared it on my face, the tinting pretty much goes away. What bothered me is it's scented. Like what doctor, Dr. Brandt, is putting scents in their products? They should know better than that. <laughs> There's no reason for that to be scented. So I have it on today. I did wear it another day. But today I'm also wearing a very high-end foundation, which I already know works really well with my skin. But I can still see the pores. So I don't see any difference using this versus not using this. So even at half price, I don't think that's worth it. It says in the box, it minimizes the look of pores and absorbs oil. Well, I don't really have oil anymore um, at my age, but I do have the pores left over. So yeah, thinking about returning this. And like I said, luckily I'm not smelling it right now on my skin. So perhaps even though it's scented, it does dissipate once it's on or once there's foundation over it. So yeah, not real thrilled about that. I was so excited that the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation was on half price. That was awesome. They also had their sheer version and a third version of Double Wear on sale for half price on a particular day. So I picked it up in another color, more of a winter color for me. I'm not wearing it today actually, but, um, but this was just really nice. I wish they'd put a pump on it because there's no pump on this bottle, but it is full coverage. It applies really nicely with a slightly damp Beauty Blender sponge. 
And after I do that, then I take a flat brush or a brush I'm going to show you in a moment by it. And I just buff that out along the edges and anywhere else that I look in my 10 times magnification mirror to see where else it needs to be buffed out and along the jawline, of course. So that was a great thing to put on sale for me. The other thing I put on today for the first time, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I purchased the Fenty, Fenty Beauty Concealer, and I got the color, oh my gosh, 170, 170. So I had tested these in the store a couple weeks ago, and I thought all of them were a little too orangey, but I actually liked it today. So in my other videos, I show how I hide my under eye tear troughs. I also have some bluish purple under my eyes. So I start with a Pixi Corrector. I do put foundation on top of that. A lot of people don't. I use a damp beauty blender to blend up the foundation. Today I'm wearing Estee Lauder Double Wear. And then I do the concealer on top. One of my favorites is the Tarte Shape Tape. So this is the Fenty. So let me just show you the color of this on my freckled hand. Let's see if we can get a nice look at that. Okay, so that's what color it is. It has really good coverage. I just put a small dot under my eye and a small dot in the inner corner, and then I use a damp beauty blender to blend it out, and it's not a wet beauty blender. It's just damp from me washing it the day before, so it's just left over. And I just dampen that out. I really smooth it out. I get a nice smooth finish, I think. And then I also, I do finish that area off and I have a few videos showing how I do that, how I set the under eye with the tiniest bit of powder and setting spray. So let me get close to the camera. This camera doesn't, this lens doesn't zoom so that you can see this under eye area. All right, I brought down the light a little bit, but if you can see this area, it's really smooth. I'm 63 years old, okay? Not 43, not 53, I'm 63. And so I'm able to smooth that out. Um, so this one's a keeper. I really thought after using it today, I was gonna tell you that I was gonna bring it back because it was too orange, but it's a keeper. I'm gonna, I really like it. And it's not thin. That's what I like about it. I can't do thin, watery-ish concealers. Mine have to be thicker. And then the damp beauty blender is the trick to get it blended out. When I was at the Ulta store just shopping and looking at the products that were coming up before the sale started, I was smelling products, I was testing products, I was choosing colors. I talked to one of the people who works there and she said she was so excited about this brush going on sale and she already had one, but she was buying a second one. This is the It Brush number 77. And if you can see here, it's triangular shape. The metal part here is bent in a triangle. When it's in the package, it doesn't look like a triangle. It looks like it's round, but number 77 is a triangle. So it's really nice for getting into crevices, you know, under the eye, little places where a round brush isn't that great. It's very soft and dense, and I haven't cleaned it yet because I've only had it a short time, but I think it's gonna clean really well. Yeah, it's super soft. So this one was a great one to try if you're looking for a new brush to blend out your foundation. Now here's another skin hair product. I'm laughing because wait till you hear the price. So this is the Murad Wrinkle Corrector. And I did look at this when I was in the store with a store employee who was an esthetician. She said, oh yeah, this one sells really well. The idea is that you apply it to your wrinkles. <laughs> and I did a little B-roll to show you. It comes out of this side. You just squeeze the little tube and then after you apply it, I put it on my wrinkles above my lip. Then you take the metal side and it's nice and cool. You could also do it on wrinkles on your crow's feet or wherever you have wrinkles on your face. Now, <laughs> here's the funny part. The regular price for this is $79. So I paid half of that. 
I paid about $40 for it. $79, how much is in here? A half an ounce. That comes out to, here's the math, $158 an ounce. So since I bought it, I was just going to Ulta yesterday and scrolling through some of the recent comments. And some people bought this during the 20, what is it, 21 days of beauty sale. And they said, I don't see that it's blurring my wrinkles. So I don't know how many, I'm not going to return it just because I, you know, I'm using it almost every day, morning and night. I just want to see it blur some wrinkles. <laughs> and we all know our own faces. So we know when wrinkles are blurred at night without makeup in the morning with makeup. And I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I like to see some before and after pictures of women who've used this and love this and have repurchased it to show me here's before and here's after. So I am not going to repurchase it. And the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump, I have two colors. I have the Primrose. Let's try this one first. And you pump it up from the bottom. It advances just a little bit. So these have a slight scent. I would call it coconut. Yeah, I think it's a coconut scent. It's not too bad. It does have a little bit of that lip plump. You know, there's something in here that gives it a little tingly feeling, but it's not overpowering. So this color is a little bit more of a rose, thus the primrose. And I have one more to try. This one is called Cherry Blossom. It's a little more pink in color compared to the last one. And I'm wearing pink today. Obviously, it's more like putting on a gloss, but without a doe foot. That's how it feels. Is it sticky? Not really. I've tried stickier. But if you like a light color um, at any time of the year, we're going into summer now as I'm filming this. If you like something that's not intense, if you just like a little bit of something and, you know, you want to try something different that's not a lip gloss, I think these would work. What do you think? This was another product I was so excited was going on sale. It was the last day of the sale. It is the Tarte shape tape and they had it in the regular and in the ultra creamy i buy it in the ultra creamy and i had found a color that works for me called 20b it's not too yellow on me i use it to brighten my under eye area and i just put a dot under each eye or even smush a little bit with the doe foot and a dot in each inner corner of the eye and then i take another damp beauty blender sponge and i blend it out and it just looks really, really nice. Now, the other thing I do, I do set it. I have a couple videos where I show how I did that. And I'll remember to link that video so you can see how I set it with the tiniest bit of powder. I'm not a big powder person now at this age, but this works really well for me, that whole combination. And it stays all day. I've gotten compliments at like seven o'clock at night from people, you know, women friends who would say, you know, did you apply your make reapply your makeup today? And I'm like, no, I didn't. This is from this morning. So that works really well for me. Another skincare product I picked up at the half off is the Tula cleanser. This is what they call the cult classic cleanser. Now I purchased this in the past. I purchased their travel size and it's nice. And the reason I bought it is because my favorite nighttime cleanser, which does a great job at removing makeup, including eye makeup, they're going to stop making it. And that is the Neutrogena Fresh Foaming Cleanser, which doesn't foam, but it does an awesome job of cleaning. And I'm going to have to do another video in the future where I talk about cleansers because I had to find something new and I use something different in the day. So on recommendation of somebody who worked at the store, I picked this up. Now Tula does very, very well at Ulta. It's one of their best selling lines. 
In fact, I wonder who owns Tula because if you scramble the letters of T-U-L-A, you get Alta. Just, just saying. The thing about this is it does remove makeup pretty well, but every time I use it, a little bit of it gets in my mouth as I'm rinsing it off. It's so weird. I don't put it on my lips. And then um, last night I used the Fresh Foaming Cleanser because I went on to Amazon and bought a bunch of it, of the Neutrogena. And I don't get that in my mouth or I don't, taste it but yeah it gets that soapy taste now here's the other thing let's go to prices again so the Tula for this size 4.2 ounces is $24 so that's $5.71 per ounce but when I compare that to Neutrogena the Neutrogena is 6.7 ounces and I used to buy them one at a time at Alta for about I don't know nine dollars so the last time I bought it on Amazon I got a pack of four each of the four bottles is 6.7 ounces so the pack of four cost me twenty three dollars and when you divide out all those ounces it was 86 cents per ounce so 86 cents for the Neutrogena that works really well or five dollars and 71 cents per ounce for the Tula so I don't know. I don't know that I'll buy it again. Neutrogena has another one they've come out with. So I'll be experimenting and um, maybe f doing some filming in my bathroom in the future to talk about cleansers that work that don't cost you a mint. I picked up two of the Urban Decay single eyeshadows and <laughs> I used to depot these and put them into my Z palette, but I think I said in the Ulta before the sale video that the last time I bought one of these, I tried to depot it and I end up breaking the eyeshadow. So they've got it really glued in here really, really well. But the two colors I picked up are Tease, and I got some B-roll of me applying this. Tease is a very nice taupe, like a medium taupe, not super dark, not super light and it's matte and it's great for that area above the crease and I'm wearing it today some of it and I put a little bit at the corner plus I put some purple in but anyway this is a really nice color for that then the other color I ended up picking up is different from what I was planning this is the one they call sin I hate their I hate their color names and this one is more of a shimmer a lighter to medium color shimmer I am wearing it on my mobile lid today and this one is really lovely I like that they put them in little packaging and clear so I can easily see what's in them without flipping it to the back to read it <laughs> putting on glasses at my age to read what they are so that was a nice buy I picked up two of the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks now one of these is in the color called local and I didn't own one that looked like this. It's from their Shine line. And, it, you know, it's this little lipstick like that. It's a little bit pinky, this one called Local. And this one isn't too dark or too bright, which a lot of their colors are dark or bright. So it's... A little more sheer than their regular vice lipsticks and all the others that I own but it's nice and light you know if you want to go for a lighter look so that is that one the other one I got is one of their regular lipsticks and this one is called oat milk now this is a little beigey I saw another youtuber demo this and I bought it for a different purpose other than wearing it alone but I'll show you what it looks like alone anyway it's a very neutral nude now I think these colors look a lot better on someone who has fuller lips than I do than a skinny lip I mean it's okay but let me show you a different way to use it now, if you have some lipstick colors in your lipstick drawer that are brighter than you like to wear these days or darker, deeper, richer looking than you want to use, 
all by themselves. I like to put a nude color like this oat milk color on top of it. So to demonstrate that, one of my things that I really like is when I'm wearing certain clothes, I like to have a purple <laughs> lip. But here's one from NYX. It's deep. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Some of them that I have are more of a dark, not as neon. I mean, this is really something, right? Clown-like almost. So I'm going to blot it. Then I'm going to take the oat milk. And then I have to wipe off the oat milk. <laughs> and I need to do a little more. Because this isn't all that opaque. There used to be one that one of the um, Kardashians had that I really liked. And then she stopped making that. Okay, then the other thing I might do after putting on something to tone it down, like the oat milk, is put on a little bit of gloss. Here I have one from Persona. I'll link it below in the color pink. And you do a little bit of that. And it just tones down that purple. So that's what I like to use the oat milk for. Now, what didn't I get that I wanted to get? First of all, was the Jane Iredale blush. I had it in my schedule, like go buy that. And I completely forgot until about four o'clock in the afternoon. And then they only had one color left. It was online only. They weren't selling it in the store. So that was a bummer. I wanted it and barely rose gone. The other thing that I wanted, and I talked about in the other video, is the Volition Turmeric Polish. Now this was an app only product. You had to go on the app and buy it. Well, I did that at 8.30 in the morning and it was already sold out. I've never bought anything on the app. I didn't like that experience. In fact, I should probably get a message into the company to say, yeah, that whole buying on the app experience wasn't a good experience. The online only is fine, but not that. So I, I was sad that I missed out on that. So what were some of your favorite products? Did you go to Ulta this year or order online and buy some things? Did you order on the app? <laughs> and did, were you able to actually buy something on the app or was it sold out at 8.30 in the morning? So. Yeah, I'd like to know your experience. What did you buy? What did you love? What did you kind of go meh? And what did you return? Please write a comment below and then check out one of my other videos by tapping its image on the right side of your screen. And I'll see you in the next video.